Good afternoon, everyone. This is Tom Bowden uh, with the Lopez Garden Club. It's a sunny afternoon in the middle of December, and we're here at Lopez Harvest with Christine Langley. And she's going to show us today what she's harvesting currently this time of the month, middle of December, and how she got to this point, what she did to make this harvest happen. Uh, but first, Christine, I'd like to say thank you for doing this for us. And uh, I wonder if you could just tell us a little bit about your background and the, and the history of the farm before we get started. All right. Well, I, uh, I went to Evergreen State College and uh, studied agriculture there. I uh, graduated in 84 or 86, I can never quite remember, but it was a long time ago. And I've been on Lopez since 1991, and my business has just sort of grown and shrunk and grown and shrunk again during that time. I've been on this land now for about 20 years and have been doing the uh, vegetables for the restaurants and uh, the grocery stores. And this year, very different year, less for the restaurants, more for the food bank. What I'm excited to talk about today is that we can be harvesting really good food at this time of year. December and January are sort of marginal months depending on how cold it's been in November, but this year it's been very mild. We have some really nice things going on, so I hope I can show you some good harvest today. Okay, well, I guess we're out here at the first bed, and boy, it's a little hard to tell what you're going to be uh, looking for in here. It looks like mostly clover to me. Indeed, it is mostly clover, but we have some carrot tops sticking up here. The clover is, uh, it can really run rampant through your garden and smother your crops, but going into the winter, it's also, it is a very nice mulch, a living mulch. Uh, it fixes nitrogen, so in the spring, when we're ready to turn in these beds, um, we'll have all that good organic matter, all that nitrogen, and it also helps keep the paths to be less muddy if they're not bare ground so we we like it in certain places at certain times so these carrots were planted uh, June 18th I just looked up the date of it and really for carrots you could you could be planting carrots um, all the way up until oh probably the you know middle of mm, first or second week of July and have really nice carrots going into the winter so Da, da, da. Check it out. We've got these gorgeous carrots. Whoa. Those are huge. That are not easy to pull out of the ground because the ground is nice and moist. Sometimes you get a splitter like that, but not to worry. There's plenty of carrots going on here. So we have beautiful carrots going on. Huh, and they're always. And how, how late did you say you could harvest these? These what we'll try to do is get them all harvested by mm, probably early February because they will start to grow again. The tops will, will die down. When they start to grow again, they're biennials, so they want to go to flower their second year. And um, then they start to get very woody. So it's nice to get them um, out of the ground before they start to regrow. The other thing is if we looked at the weather and found that it was going to be frozen for a few days, um, I would probably come out and harvest a bunch of them uh, because they can freeze at the top. You can see their tops are kind of sticking up out of the ground and if the tops freeze then they will go kind of mushy and they won't mm. keep very well. Right. But if they have a good high sugar content then that makes them more, um, that's their antifreeze. Cool. So. <laughs> cool. Well it looks like we're going to talk about broccoli then. Broccoli, nice hearty crop sweeter in the, in the winter than it is in the summer even. Good, good. Uh -huh. <laughs> so these, these plants were, I seeded them on the 2nd of July and planted them uh, about two or three weeks later. Uh, they're planted very close together. This is a small variety, but that does actually, uh, it helps them protect each other during the winter a little bit. The leaves overhanging will sometimes make a little umbrella over the broccoli heads because one thing that can happen with broccolis which you'll see is they will start to get sort of, I don't know if you can see that in the shot, but they start to get sort of waterlogged with if we get a lot of rain. But if you harvest them when they're young, like this, so we've harvested the, the main heads off of these broccolis already. We've taken uh, a harvest of the side shoots twice, and this is the third picking of these guys. So these plants have really given us a lot of value um, over the course of the season. We've, we've, picked, we've picked many hundreds of pounds of, of broccoli out of these few rows, and we had one other row as well. So what's lovely um, about this is you can pick these little, little sprouts, 
There you go. You don't even have to prep it in order to cook it. It's all Perfect. ready to go. What, what variety <laughs> of broccoli is this? This is um, Green Magic, it's called. But there are lots of really good yeah. broccolis out mm -hmm. there. Fiesta is another one of my favorites, but uh, Green Magic is, is a really nice, uh, consistent performer. It does well when it's still hot in the summer, and then it continues to do well going into the winter like this. Well, we're over at another bed now, and what, what have we got going here, Christine? So, um, one of the things that is important to think about when you're gardening, of course, is, is soil fertility. And um, I love to grow cover crops, and even more than just cover crops, I love to go cro grow cover crops that you can eat. So, these are field peas, and I planted these uh, probably early October usually plant my cover crops uh, after our first fall rain, whenever that is. It can be any, any time. Sometimes in, it's in September if we're lucky. Sometimes it's not until October. But um, these are field peas. They won't make a nice pod, that, but they make a really nice little green like that, which is super delicious and tastes like peas. So once these get growing a little bit more, they'll, uh, usually by the second week of January, that's the time I think that the, um, sort of the growing energy comes back to our climate here. And these will start to grow pretty quickly. We usually have some nice weather in February. So these will be up around knee high by mm, probably early March. And we can take nice little uh, clippings off of them and put them into our salad before much of anything else has really gotten going. So this is a, this is a great dual purpose crop, crop here. It's, uh, it's improving the soil and it's giving us something to eat as well. How does it improve the soil? Uh, it's, a, it's a legume, so they're nitrogen fixers. And also they make lots of organic matter. They make the biomass that we can then either turn into the soil or what I like to do um, a lot of is I use this black uh, fabric here and I'll just cover the bed with the black fabric and that will kill everything that's going on in there, including the roots. And so when I pull the fabric back after um, usually about in the spring when it's chilly, it takes maybe four, five, six weeks, something like that to really get everything to be down, get, get, uh, get uh, uh, completely uh, um, killed off and then pull off the fabric and I have a nice clean bed to plant into and I haven't uh, uh, turned it up and I won't be bringing any more uh, weed seeds to the surface. So it, it also helps with, uh, with the weeds in the spring. So. It's an interesting system that I'm working on. It's a challenge in this, in this soil type that we have here because we have a lot of clay and our, our soils do get quite compacted over the winter just from the rain. So we're working to try to minimize our, our disruption of the soil. All right, Christine, what do we have here? It looks like it's growing up and not down. Yes, indeed. So this is daikon radish. And this is another, um, we love our root vegetables because it's going to be protected by the ground, being in the ground, right? So, and also it has a high sugar content, so that will keep it from freezing. Um, these are lovely, crispy, sweet, tender radishes. And they will get... Look at that. They'll get, yeah. oh, we see we even missed the very end of it. But they'll get quite large. Um, they, by, by maybe February or so, they'll be this big around and they'll be this long and still be lovely, tender, sweet, very white flesh. They come also in pink. My pink ones didn't do as well this year, so I won't show you the pink ones. But, um, but yeah, this is great if you like to make um, a, any kind of pickled vegetable. These are fantastic. So it doesn't really matter how big they get. They're not like some things that if they get too big, they get bitter. Right, right, exactly. At this time of year, that's the great thing about growing in the wintertime is everything grows very slowly. Everything stays very lush and sweet. Um, whereas you grow these in the summertime, they can get woody if they grow for too long and they will bolt if you put the, grow them at either end of the season. But things like arugula also at this time of mm. year is wonderful. It never goes bitter because mm -hmm. it just stays very succulent. Nice. Yep, when did these you plant days. these? So these, July 22nd, I seeded these. These like to be direct seeded, of course, because the roots, um, you want the roots to grow nice and straight. So July 22nd, get those in the ground. Um, and you'll have a nice crop going, going all the way through the winter. Great. This looks like something alien. <laughs> yes, indeed. This is, a, this is my favorite fractal vegetable. This is uh, Romanesco. 
and it's in the same family as uh, broccoli and cauliflower and um, again all that family is very hardy in the winter and so these were seeded um, on June 5th. I also do a, a later seeding usually around the, uh, around the summer solstice um, and that these are quite hardy and they'll go they won't take a hard, hard freeze for days on end, but you can see they're beautiful here still in the middle of December. How long would you go before you would harvest all of these? I would probably, I'm looking at this one thinking, if we were to have uh, some cold nights coming up, I would probably harvest it before then mm -hmm. because it's in its full maturity, it is a little bit more fragile um, ah. to freezing than if it was slightly younger. So it's sort okay. of like humans, you know, mm -hmm. if they're too young or they're too old, they're more vulnerable. And if they're mm. in the very in the peak of their of their health, then they're going to then they're going to survive better. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so well, Brussels sprouts. Yeah, one Brussels of my sprouts. Yeah, favorite winter vegetables. These also were seeded uh, early June, early to mid June, uh, and the challenging thing about growing brassicas at that time of year is they have a lot of insect pressure. So they want to get aphids, and they really prefer to grow in cooler weather. So the 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 best advice I can give for how to get these things going well is make sure you're giving them really healthy, healthy soil, good water, grow the plants so they're very vibrant and they're not stressed at all. So if they're stressed, the aphids, they just have a way, they can just hone in that, on that plant and attack it. So if you can keep these plants from being stressed at that time of year, then you'll have beautiful Brussels sprouts at this time of year. Do you need to put row covers on them at any point? I do put row covers on them because I do have uh, root maggots. And that is a, uh, with all of my broccolis and cauliflowers, I cover them with remay and I seal the remay all along the edges. It's basically a physical barrier that keeps the fly, that lays the eggs, that hatches the maggots, that eat the roots. Keeps those away from the plants. Yeah. Are these ready to harvest? These are ready to harvest. Yep. We did a hard picking of them at Thanksgiving and now they're sizing up a little bit. They grow. They do grow very slowly at this time of year, but they do grow. And you can also see the other thing going on in this patch is there's a lot of other vegetation growing yes, on. So this yes. is basically a living mulch. So we have crimson clover growing on, we have um, some white clover, we have, this is a uh, phacelia, which has a beautiful blue flower, but it's a very nice succulent, you know, in the spring when we're done with it, it will, it, it's very succulent, so it will just, um, it will rototill in or uh, die back very readily and add all of that good organic matter to the soil and keeps the soil from being bare and exposed when it's raining mm. and getting a lot of um, compaction going on if you don't have a way to, to break the force of those raindrops. Does the, um, does the, is the same thing apply to the, to the Brussels sprouts where you, you need to really harvest them before you get a couple of several nights of hard, hard freeze? They are actually quite hardy. Really? They will go through some freeze, yeah, oh, and they nice. will sweeten up. All of these brassicas will even get a little bit sweeter when they've had a frosty night. Really? Good, so, good to yeah. know. Cold weather, sweeter vegetables. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So you may have to wait for them. It's better to wait for them to defrost before you harvest them, mm. because if you har harvest them while they're frozen, a lot of times they will just be sort of mushy. But if you keep them on the plant while they're frozen, let them defrost, come out and harvest them, they'll be just beautiful. <laughs> well, gee, this is yet another garden area in your place. This is wonderful. And it looks like there's a lot of cabbage in here. Yes, cabbage, a lot of cabbage. I love to make kimchi and all mm -hmm. kinds of ferments. And so Napa cabbage is a really important ingredient for me to have. These guys grow so fast that in case you have forgotten all of your other winter seeding, <laughs> you can grow, you can still grow Chinese cabbage. Um, I seeded these on uh, August 15th and I usually start things in, in little plug trays. Maybe you've seen my previous presentation, uh, and then plant those plugs out into the, into the field about three weeks later. So these are beautiful heads right now. Not so gorgeous to look at on the outside, but Wow, that is nice. So some beautiful, eh, the slugs love them too, but there we go. We can have beautiful Chinese cabbage. 
great raw in a salad at this time of year when your lettuce is not liking the weather so much, but cabbage is very hearty. Radicchio! Oh, right, radicchio. <laughs> Another one of my favorites because they are so sweet. And this is their time of year. You can grow them in the summer, but they are at their best in the winter. So take off the little slimy leaves on the outside and you have this beautiful head, which is lovely um, raw in a salad, or we were just talking about grilling them, put a little olive oil on them, put Cut them on them the in grill. Cut yep. down. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, beautiful vegetable. And it comes in all kinds of forms. So we have these guys, these are Castelfranco types. They're all named after the regions where they were developed in ah. Italy. So they have, every region has its own. So we have these guys. Then we have these guys. These are Treviso. Those are so colorful. Another beautiful, look at that. That's I just, mean, don't wow. you just want to eat yes. that? Put a little salad cup in there. Uh -huh. <laughs> 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 Excellent. And then this is Puntarelle in the radicchio family delicious sweet crunchy salad green for the winter oh that's quite different and we're gonna have to get a good close-up oh, shot yeah, of this oh yeah that's beautiful the sun's shining through because it. they are crazy looking they are crazy how do you like to prepare those these have these little knobs on them almost traditionally what you do is you slice them very thin vertically and then put them in ice water and then they, they curl up and it makes a delicious salad with a little squeeze of lemon and a drizzle of olive oil and a sprinkle of salt. Just an amazing vegetable. Well, of course we can't uh, end this without <laughs> talking about kale and it looks like you have several different things going on in here with respect to kale. Tell us about it. All right, we have a few different kinds of kale. This is the lacinato kale that people seem to really love. Um, we also have, if you look over this way, that's Yegelo it's called. It's a very frilly kale, very sweet. And there's a red ribbed kale. So kale comes in myriad of forms and, and uh, colors and shapes and makes a really nice uh, winter salad or you can saute it. And then the other thing we have going on in this patch is some things that, we'll, that will come on for later in the winter. So for instance, this here, this is a purple sprouting broccoli. It's called Red Fire. And it's going to give us nice little broccoli shoots probably the end of January. So that will give us something to look forward to. And also these cabbages here. This is a January King cabbage and they will be very hardy and um, be harvesting those uh, January, February, when a lot of other stuff may have gone down to the cold or too much rain. Um, these cabbages will be really good food at that time of year. And the one thing we didn't talk about is Swiss chard, but Swiss chard, I tend to grow Swiss chard, many, many uh, rotations of Swiss chard throughout the summer and I just leave them in the field because they will all grow nicely through the winter and give you um, new Swiss chard leaves to, uh, to harvest to add to your saute or to your salad. Christine, this has been a fabulous tour of your place and your gardens and, uh, and all the food you're growing and uh, it's just so much here. Uh, I wonder how, do you, how, how much help do you have to do all this? <laughs> well, this year, this year it was just me. Just you? Just me. Uh, in, the, in the past I have had interns or employees a couple days a week usually. Um, but this year um, there were the sort of intern scene didn't come together True. because of the pandemic, of course. And I just decided that for, for simplicity's sake, I would just keep it to, to what I could manage on my own. And so since mm. I've been doing this for long enough, I, I try to um, work smarter, not harder, and to make my goals achievable. So not to do more than I could manage on my own. And I would say I more or less succeeded. There were points in the summer where I felt a little crazy, you know, but, <laughs> <I> bet, <yeah. laughs> but that's, that's, that's the life of a farmer, you know. True, true. Christine, thank you so much for having us here today. The Garden Club is going to really appreciate this. And hopefully we can do this again sometime later in the year when uh, you have something different to show us. Absolutely. Well, I'm very excited to show you all what you can have to eat in the winter we can do it again in February, and the most difficult time is March, you know, so um, it's a, it's a year-round proposition to grow food around here, and an exciting one, too. Well, thanks again.